In education, we often look to theories of learning to guide us. However, developments in learning sciences, specifically neuroscience in this case, can give us powerful insights that can guide our design and delivery of meaningful learning experiences. So in this video, we'll take a look into how our brains work to try and understand how we can learn and what that means for our approaches to teaching and designing of learning experiences. One challenge that neuroscience had was trying to develop and navigate their understanding of the brain based on a map that was well over a century old. This classical brain map shows where speech originates and visual processing occurs, but doesn't show the relationships and connections between these areas. That's like having a high technology super yacht for a voyage around the world, but having to follow a map from the 15th century. Thankfully, advances in technology allow us to now be guided by satellite navigation in our ships and advances in neuroscience technologies are helping to progress our understanding of the human brain. Scientists can now see something called the connectome and have recently carried out a project called the Human Connectome Project that was dedicated to mapping connections in the brain. The Human Connectome Project has brought the brain map into the 21st century by showing what's connected to what in the nervous system. Scientists have discovered that it's not the number of neurons that's important, it's the number of connections and how we are able to make connections in our brain that makes us unique as a species. They've also identified that an individual's connectomes are as unique as our fingerprints and therefore we differ from each other in the ways our brains are connected and therefore how each of us learn. To break this down further, there are three major networks of the connectome. First, the frontal part of your cortex that looks different and is connected differently to the other parts. This part of your brain allows you to plan, execute and monitor your actions in the environment. This part of the brain is about taking action on the world with a key function of checking, did I do what I meant to do? Then the second part to consider is the core of your brain or the center. Here is the area related to motivation or emotion that allows you to evaluate and set priorities in relation to your attention and action. This area is not about taking in information or expressing it, but it's about evaluating it. For example, is this information important to me? Is it exciting or boring? Can I focus on something else? Finally, there's the back part of your cortex made up of the visual cortex, somatic sensory cortex and auditory cortex. All of this does one thing. It takes information that's been received through your senses, your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, and it attempts to make sense of it to create usable knowledge. So in this area, each of us has different levels of connectivity. You could have more developed connections in your visual cortex than maybe your auditory cortex, meaning that you would process visual information much more quickly than perhaps sound. Now, this does not mean you're a visual learner. However logical that leap seems, it's still an oversimplified leap. Learning styles that aim to identify what type of learner you are, are a neuromyth based on misinterpretation of neuroscience, which I'll cover in more detail in a separate video. So in that case, what does all this mean in the context of designing learning experiences? Well, as mentioned, it confirms that we are all varied and diverse in our approaches to learning. However, traditionally, we tend to have fixed, uniformed approaches to teaching and learning media or content. So how can we shift our approach to embrace that every learner is different and therefore design to remove traditional barriers to learning by offering flexible, and vary teaching approaches and content. Well, we can utilize technology to help us create and disseminate educational content in different ways. But first, we can look to an established framework to guide our approach. Universal Design for Learning aims to provide access to learning for an increasingly diverse range of learners by providing multiple means of engagement, representation, and multiple means of action and expression. To find out more about Universal Design for Learning, check out the next video and I hope we provided an interesting insight into how your brain works.